Welcome back to Broken Electronics. I'm Lee. It's a pleasure to have you here, and once again, happy March and Tosh. For this March and Tosh, we've been focusing on the PowerPC IMAX. Well, we took a look at the 1999 tray loading grape IMAX, uh, and we've since then been comparing IMAX from 2002, where the G4s started, to 2003, then the 2003 against the 2004, which was the introduction of the iMac G5. And today we're going to be examining again the 2004 iMac G5 and seeing where it ended up in the 2005 iMac G5. I think this should be interesting. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you'll want to join. And if you do, stay tuned. And here, the stars of the show today. The, on the left, the iMac G5 from 2004, and on the right, the iMac G5 from 2005. I'm pretty sure of that because, as you can see, they look identical. If we look at a port selection, you've got, from top to bottom, microphone, speaker, mini VGA, three USB 2, two Firewire 400, phone jack, and Ethernet jack. And here, exactly the same jacks in exactly the same order. No differences there. And now, if we come around to the front, each have a slot loading DVD drive, DVD burner actually, and it's exactly the same form factor. They are both the same size screen, uh, this, obviously, I think you can tell from that, this was a spec bump. It was not, uh, no difference in the form factor. The machines uh, were very, very similar. We will, as we boot the machines up, we'll get a good look at exactly what the differences are, because there certainly are differences. All right, so let me connect up the 2004, and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. All right, welcome to the year 2004. Uh, looking here at the Leopard desktop, one other thing you will notice, uh, these two machines are gonna look identical even in this regard. Uh, there are two partitions on each drive, Leopard and Panther. Uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the other machine and Panther on that machine. Panther was the machine, it was the operating system this machine shipped with. Uh, I set up Leopard on this machine using a DVD install uh, and then transferred data using a time machine backup from the 2005 machine. When I, that's when I first got this machine. All right, so to find the differences, and differences there are, 1.6 gigahertz PowerPC G5. The other machine is more powerful. We'll see that in a bit. All right. That Cheetah, hmm, CDRW. Well, that's funny. I, I really thought there was a DVD burner. But there isn't. It will it'll write CDs, but it will not write DVDs, uh, which is not really an issue. Uh, graphics and displays. The NVIDIA GeForce FX 5200 with its 64 megabytes of video RAM, which we, we saw in our last episode, is behaving quite well. Okay, maxed out to a gigabyte of, of memory. I believe it came with 512 by default, which is what mine had. That was the first upgrade I ever did to a Mac was to upgrade the RAM in it. Uh, all right. Is there anything else we need to look at here? It does have an airport card as does the other machine, but we will not be using that. Okay, then. One second. Got to get the timer. Although, at first, we won't be needing that, because we're going to start out with benchmarks. And 
And I know you saw these benchmarks running last week, but for people who may not have seen uh, last week's episode, good to run them again. All right. And we'll run our geek bench. Doesn't take that long, but I will spare you that time. Stay tuned. And our results are in. <clears throat> And the scores are almost exactly the same as the last time I ran them for last week's video. Uh, an overall score of 1047 with the processor integer of 1060, floating point 1097, memory 967, and memory bandwidth. Uh, again, it, it, that blows me away just how much better that is than we saw on uh, the... 2003 G4. Okay. So we can quit out of Geekbench. And huh, I'm tempted not to even run Open Mark, but what the heck, we might as well at least have the visual. It's going to be exactly the same. It's always exactly the same. Stay tuned. I was right, 1752. That's exactly what it scored the last time. So we'll make a note of that. All right. And then Xbench. Running all of the tests. I, I want to take a look particularly at the disk test. All right. Okay, we'll be back with results. Stay tuned. All right, results are in. Uh, now, of course, XBench is not the consistent animal that uh, OpenMark is. It varies every time. Uh, I've run this several times. I've seen it go as high as 60, and this is about the lowest I've seen it go. It's obviously not a hugely significant thing. But on this run, 59.19 on the overall... CPU 79.97, thread test 44.01, the memory test 75.23, quartz graphics 86.1, OpenGL 63.86, and the disk test 91.39. It bothers me. I don't understand. Uh, why the disk test was so much higher. And the only thing that was higher on the 2003 iMac G4. I, it'll be interesting to see the 2005 in comparison since it's got substantially the same disk in there and substantially the same memory. I'll, I'll be interested in seeing the comparison there. All right. We can close out of XBench. Don't need to save it because we took notes. Mount the disk image. Okay. Next, we have NeoOffice to usability. And I've got to get my timer ready. And we go. Slow loading is new office. It, it's it's an office suite and it loads every component of the suite, uh, as opposed to MS Office, where if you open Word, you just open Word. If you open Excel, you just open Excel. Okay, waiting for the cursor. And we'll type gibberish. Okay. Thirty-one point nine seconds. Of course, that depends on how fast I am with my thumb. All right, but it's going to be in that ballpark. Well, comparison to the last time I ran this last week, it's a little bit faster that time. Who knows? Okay, quit in the office. Discard the changes because we do not need to save gibberish. All right. 
The next test is going to be 104 Fox loading to ESPN. Uh, and I'm going to spare you this. This takes a minute, minute and a half, minute and three quarters. Stay tuned. All right. One minute, nine seconds, uh, 0.57. Uh, quite a bit faster than than it ran last week, although, as I pointed out in that video, ESPN, while it's a good test for startup, because it's a very dynamic web page, there's just tons of stuff that loads in the background on it, uh, making it a very challenging page for a machine this old to load, but it being dynamic, it keeps changing all the time, so you're not loading exactly the same content. Still, I've been doing it, so I might as well continue doing it. All right. And then. WebKit to YouTube. Waiting for the times to show in the videos. And they're there. I was a little late. 26.83. But I think it's probably more like 25. That will go with what I came up with. Okay, so I'm going to be uh, off camera. I will set up. A YouTube video for us to uh, to watch and see how it plays. As of last week, it was doing a darn good job. Okay, stay tuned. Okay, once again, I have loaded up the first of last year's Marchintosh series, the Quest for the World's Most Powerful Sawtooth. It is again set to 720p, and it is in theater mode. Uh, I did, by the way, try it full screen. It just can't do it. All right. And it's fine. Now, I, I will point out, I had to... This, by the way, is my old camera. The quality is not that good. Um, my old web camera. Um, it does have to preload a fair amount to just start playing in 720p. Uh, if you let it load for a minute or so, it'll stutter a bit at first, then settle in. On the other hand, if you want to play at 360p, which it defaults to, it does that fine. Uh, you have to wait a little bit for it to load up, but not that much. Well, okay. Uh, I was blown away last week that it could do this, and it continues to be able to do this. Uh, Pretty amazing. I will be very interested in comparing this with the 2005 iMac G5, which has a much improved video card. Well, okay. Um, I'm going to end up shutting this machine down, hooking up the 2005, and we will do our time traveling thing. Stay tuned. All right. Now, here we are on the Leopard desktop on the 2005. Welcome to 2005, by the way. Uh, and as I pointed out, this will look exactly the same as the 2004. So far, you can't tell the difference. Even down to the two partitions on the SSD, one for Leopard and one for Panther. I, I really wanted to put Panther on this machine uh, because my original uh, iMac G5 had Panther as its initial operating system. And I've got a video um, back some time ago, of course, when I first got this machine, where I installed Panther on it. It's one of those uh, Chaos Edition <laughs> videos. Uh, this is a very unique machine. It may very well be the only uh, iMac G5 that can actually, from 2005 anyway, that can boot into Panther. 
My original was a 2004. It came with Panther pre-installed. The 2005s came with Tiger pre-installed. Ugh. So, somehow or other, I managed to get the install to work, and it will boot into Panther. Uh, I don't do that often. The big problem is that the fans ramp up to full. Have you ever heard these machines with the fans running absolute full? It's... Uh, kind of a scary experience. Uh, now, I tried copying the fan texts from Leopard uh, into Panther, and that didn't do any good. I don't think, I'll have to go back and look at that video, I don't think I tried copying the Tiger fan texts. That might possibly do something. Uh, if it does, well, that'll be another video. We shall find out. Okay. Um, all right, now to see, as I pointed out, this is this is really a spec bump. The two machines are identical in so many ways. The first spec bump is a pretty big one, a two gigahertz PowerPC G5, as opposed to the 1.6 gigahertz, and that's an appreciable amount. Two gigabytes of DDRSD RAM, that is no different. A Matsushita DVD-R, and if we check down in disk burning, here's another spec bump. We do have the ability with this machine to burn DVDs, so that's a, that's a good thing. Uh, now, the other big thing in the spec bump, instead of that NVIDIA, NVIDIA uh, GeForce with six, 64 megabytes of video RAM, we have an ATI Radeon 9600 with 128 megabytes of video RAM. Uh, not a fantastic card by G5 standards, but a very serviceable one. Uh, and that should certainly make a difference. Uh, there's not much else. This too has an airport card. I think it's exactly the same card, to tell you the truth. Uh, for the purposes of this test, these tests, we have the airport turned off in favor of hardwiring the machine. Uh, the connection is to an airport express, so it is a little bit on the slow side, but at least it's been equal for all of the machines. Okay, as usual, let's start out with Geekbench. which will probably, I was wondering if it was going to warn me to uh, uh, check for updates. <laughs> but no, not this time. Okay, we'll run, run the benchmarks and be back with the results. Stay tuned. And here are the results. 1291, which uh, is close on to... 250 points higher than the 2004 did at 1047. And our individual scores here, processor integer, processor floating point, memory, memory bandwidth, all improved. Uh, and that's, you know, since the memory is exactly the same, <clears throat> that's got to be the CPU affecting that. It really does. Okay. Now for open mark. I don't know why that does that. All right. This should should jump up quite a bit too. Okay, we'll be back with the results. Stay tuned. It's kind of interesting as we have progressed step by step to newer and more powerful machines, Geekbench runs a lot faster. Open mark takes longer and longer. All right, uh, 4147, which absolutely destroys the 1752 on the 2004. And of course, it's a, it's an open GL uh, only, so the, the changing graphics card makes a huge difference. All right. And then finally, 2X Bench.
and run all the tests. Okay, we'll be back with the results. Stay tuned. All right, we have the Xbench results. Uh, and Xbench, just like Geekbench, does in fact run faster. Uh, overall score, 79.59. Uh, quite a bit higher than the 59.19. Uh, so yeah, that's like 20 and a half points higher. CPU test, perhaps not quite as dramatic, but still still definitely there. 96.43 as opposed to 79.97. That's true for the thread test as well. Uh, just 87.89 as opposed to 75.23. Uh, the, the memory test, interesting, at 87.88. Uh, over 22, 22.6 or so uh, points higher than on the iMac G4, uh, G5 from 2004. And of course, it's exactly the same memory, uh, not literally the same memory, but the same exact type of memory. I uh, got, even got it from the same place. Uh, so clearly the improved CPU is making much more out of that memory. An interesting thing to see. Quartz graphics, 104.79, uh, as opposed to 86.10. OpenGL absolutely destroys the 2004. 109.51 as opposed to 63.86. <clears throat> UI is relatively close, 38.55 as opposed to 31.71. But here's the one, I don't get it. The disk test, 278.65 as opposed to the 2004, which was 91.39. Something funny is going on there. <laughs> Something strange. I'm going to need to open that machine up and, and check the connections. I don't know. Because it's the same SSD. Oh, well. Interesting. Very interesting. And what's... What's that x -Bench? All right, we'll do, um, we'll get the timer ready here. If we're going to time something. All right, so this is new office to usability. I'm expecting with the faster CPU this should be better. Okay. There's the insertion point. Okay. Eh. It is better, not as much as I had thought. 2705, whereas in 2004 it was 31.9. So, yeah, four seconds. Uh, uh, no, uh, excuse me. Five, five to six, between five and six seconds. All right. Okay. Closing Neo Office. Okay. Now we've got 104 Fox to ESPN. Starting now. Stay tuned. 137.53. Oh boy. Uh, you know, I, and I've run it actually just for the heck of it several times, and it varies 
by a lot every single time. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's a, it is a test, but as far as a comparative test from one system to another, uh, unless you're doing the two systems at exactly the same time, which is an interesting thought, uh, it's just not going to work. Okay, let's close out a 10 poor fox. It does become fully responsive. It, on the 2004, even once it f loaded fully, uh, scrolling was really slow and erratic for a while. Uh, it settles down much, much more quickly on this machine, for whatever that's worth. Okay. WebKit to YouTube. This should be more reasonable. And here the fans start to ramp up. We're looking for our times. There they are. Okay. It's my natural color. Two hours and 46 minutes. That's uh, <laughs> something. Okay. So. 2213. That's the last time test. We can put that down. Make a note of that. Uh, and that's 6.7 seconds faster than the 2004 could do it. Okay, so I'm going to need to get a video called up. And then we're going to see how YouTube plays. Stay tuned. All right. We have our same video loaded up. Uh, I have let it preload some. We are at 720p. And I hope moving the mouse around like that doesn't cause problems, because sometimes it does. Welcome back to Broken Electronics. I'm going to try to keep this And it's short, fine. Because this is actually an intro. It's to the absolutely intro. fine. Uh, the, the series upon which we are embarking today was actually okay. recorded some time. And it will continue to be fine. Uh, I'm going to try one more thing. I'm going to try to set it up into full screen, and I'll do that off camera. Stay tuned. Okay, here we are, full screen, 720p. My hot corner is right down there. Okay. Welcome back to Broken Electronics. I'm going to try to keep this Look at that. Because this is actually an intro. It's doing it. It's doing it. Upon which we are embarking today was actually recorded some time. And it's fine. Now it did take it did take preloading, uh, of course. Uh, in recent days come to my attention that no, I'm going to mute myself. Okay. Now uh in full disclosure, uh, I use this machine a lot. In fact I watch YouTube on this machine a lot. Uh usually uh three sixty in theater mode, uh just because I don't want to wait forever for things to load up. Uh so yeah, this is this has been great. Um uh, I did that. Uh, I shot the 2004 uh, clips this afternoon before dinner. I then stopped, cooked dinner, and ate it. And while I did, I put on uh, one of Adrian Black's, Adrian's Digital Basement. And I put it into theater mode, uh, into uh, full screen, just to see if it would at 720p. And it did. I had just assumed it wouldn't. Now, the thing I'm finding here, how long has this been going? About a minute and 20 seconds. What I found with, with Adrian's video was that it ran fine for about three minutes, then it froze up. Uh, the video froze up. The, the audio would tend to go on. Uh, then it would catch up again. It would be okay again. So I, I don't know that this is really uh, viable. Maybe there's something about that video. I'm going to let this run once once I conclude the video. Uh, but the mere fact that it can, because I, I tried doing this on the 2004 and the video wouldn't even start. It just sat there. Audio would go on. But yeah, there's a big jump going on here. You know, even the the simple spec bumps 
between the 2004 and 2005 IMAX have made a gigantic difference. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. Be good to other people. They need it and deserve it. Be good to yourselves. It all has to start from there. <laughs> oh, up in the corner there, that, that's this iMac. I had moved it around, uh, you know, to, to get, I needed to get things off my dining room table. Um, in any event, we will make this place a better world. It isn't yet, so please take very, very good and careful care. All right, I've got you know some, some Power Mac things planned coming up. Uh, G4s, uh, maybe some G5s too. Uh, we may revisit Power Books. There's, there's a bunch of other things coming. So, until those do appear here on the channel, this has been Broken Electronics.